Close your eyes. Watch your breath. When the breath comes in, know it's coming in, and know when it's going out. Just stay right there with the sensation of the breath. It's called giving the mind a foundation, a good solid place to stay. Because the mind doesn't have a foundation like this, it goes running around outside, looking for something it can depend on. And what does it is find? It finds sight, sound, smells, taste, tactile sensations, all of which don't have any real substance. It has its ideas. Those have even less substance. They're not really things you can lean on, not things you can depend on. So you come inside, you try to develop qualities in the mind. These are more reliable. These are more dependable. That way the mind has a chance to really settle down and have a sense of well-being, because as the Buddha said, there is no happiness aside from peace. And where are you going to find peace in this world? You can find it only in your own mind, and only then if you train it. So you want to focus right here, because this is where everything of value is. Today marks the day coming out of the rains retreat. In Thailand they have a ceremony. It's this first alms round after the rains retreat is called Dakbat Tewo. It comes from the word Dewo Rohana, which means the opening of the world by the devas. The story goes that the Buddha had spent three months in the rains retreat teaching his mother up in the Tusita heaven. And then the day of his return to the earth, at the end of the rains retreat, the stairway was opened from the, from the heavens down to the earth. The Buddha came down the stairway, escorted by Indra and Brahma. And all the various levels of the world were opened up. The beings in heaven could see everybody else. The beings in hell could see everybody else. Everybody could see everybody else. And then when the Buddha got down the base of the stairway, people came. They had missed giving him his alms. There was a huge crowd of people came to give alms. The story goes that some of them couldn't get anywhere close, so they took their rice and they formed it in little balls and threw it into his bowl. You can imagine what that was like. But if you go to the spot now, it's near Sankasa in India. There's hardly anything left. There's a, there's a column by King Ashoka and a few brick ruins. And the people around there are not really Buddhist. And there's a rep they have reputations for thievery. In other words, you think of these events, it was an enormous event. And yet what's left of it now? Well, what is left is the Dharma that the Buddha taught. The Dharma, and we keep that alive by bringing it into our minds and developing this sense of inner well-being. That's what preserves the Dharma. That's what maintains the Dharma. It's finding the happiness that the Dharma is aimed at. So you look around at you at the world. You know, things. There used to be a huge monastery there at Sankasat. Shransung went in the seventh century, and this was about a thousand, more than a thousand years after the Buddha passed away. And he said it was a still a very large monastery there, and they still maintain the traditions of that that event. But nowadays, what is there? It's just big empty fields with a few bricks and a little piece of stone. And that's it. There's nothing really lasting in the world. Nothing really of any substance out in the world. The only happiness of substance you're going to find is if you look inside and you train the qualities of the mind that can give you a sense of support, give you a sense of foundation, and that can lead you to the happiness that doesn't have to depend on foundations at all. But in the meantime, you work on the foundation to make sure that it's solid. And then the world inside your mind will open up as well.